You unlock this door with the key of imagination. Beyond it is another dimension. A dimension of sound, a dimension of sight, a dimension of mind. You're moving into a land of both shadow and substance, of things and ideas. You've just crossed over into the Twilight Zone. Yes? Oh, hello, Bill. Not really asleep, just sort of dozing, waiting. What time is it? 4.30 already. How is he? Mommy, who's that? Colonel Conacher, honey. Good. Well, Bill, tell him I wish him... But that's crazy, isn't it? That's gibberish. Just tell him... Just tell him we'll be waiting for him. Thanks, Bill. Yes. Yes, we'll be watching. That was Colonel Conacher, honey. He said Daddy's just fine. Is he going up soon? Probably within an hour, honey. That's what Colonel Conacher said. Do you want to go back to bed? No. I don't blame you. I can't sleep either. I'll tell you what. I'll make some coffee for me and some cocoa for you, and you get dressed in the meantime, okay? Then we'll turn on the television set. Okay, Mommy. And in this morning's news, all is set at the Cape for the big launch. Astronaut Robert Gaines will orbit the Earth alone, gathering vital information for the president's stepped-up space program. So far, Be safe, Bob. Are clear, Be safe, darling. Looks like a go. And come back in to us. News, the stock exchange in London reports an opening gain, despite concern over yesterday's devaluation. <laughs> The year is 1963. In the vernacular of spaceflight, this is T minus one hour, 60 minutes before a human being named Major Robert Gaines is lifted off from Mother Earth and rocketed into the sky, farther and longer than any man ahead of him. You may not have read about this one in the history books, because government security has kept the full story under wraps until now. But to set the record straight, officially or unofficially, Let's call this one of the first faltering steps of man to sever the umbilical cord of gravity and stretch out a fingertip toward the unknown. In a moment, we'll join this astronaut named Gaines and embark on an unscheduled adventure because the environs overhead, the stars, the sky, the infinity of space are all part of a vast question mark known as the Twilight Zone. We now continue with The Twilight Zone and our story, The Parallel, starring Lou Diamond Phillips with Stacy Keach as your narrator. Hello, Gaines. Hey, Conacher. Pulse normal? Reasonable. Someplace between nonchalance and panic. <laughs> I know the feeling. I talked to Helen. She's fine. Says to tell you they'll be waiting. Bless you for that. Any messages for the angels? Well, you could give them a kiss for me. Any that you happen to meet. <laughs> well, on my last orbit around, I'll lasso a pair of gossamer wings and I'll ship them down to Air Express. Collect. <laughs> oh. It's kind of an odd feeling. To know that I'll be off the Earth for a week. Well, that's progress. Gus Grissom went 302 miles. John Glenn made three orbits. Wally Shira handled six. You're going to go round and round. And when you come back down, Bobby, we'll be that much closer to filing a claim on some more sky. Good luck, buddy. Thanks, Bill. Thanks a lot. This is Capcom. The countdown for the MX-10 launch is T minus 19 seconds. T minus 19 seconds and holding. T minus eight seconds. Seven. Is six, that Daddy's rocket ship? Five, yes, Maggie. Four, Don't worry, honey. He's three, going to be all right. Two. One. Zero. 
Ignition. Main stage. Lift off. Godspeed, darling. Godspeed. The MX-10 liftoff time is 5.30 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. All systems go. Astronaut Gaines reports his fuel and oxygen quantity steady, the cabin pressure decreasing on schedule. How's he feel up there? Go ahead, 10. We hear you loud and clear. Zero G and I feel fine. Spacecraft is turning around. The view is tremendous. Roger. Turnaround has started. Roger. The spacecraft is turning around, and I can see the booster just a couple of yards behind me. It's beautiful. Roger, 10. You have a go. At least 40 orbits. Roger. This is Phoebus 10. Understand. Go for 40 orbits. You can see clear back across the Cape. Quite a sight. Roger. Still reading it loud and clear. Next transmission, Bermuda. Roger. Understand. Next transmission, Bermuda. Spacecraft did damp okay and turned around. Scoping is extended okay. Phoebus 10, Bermuda. Capcom Tech on HF. Phoebus 10. Phoebus 10. This is Canary, Capcom. Read you loud and clear. Over. Phoebus 10, this is Zanzibar, Captech. We have solid telemetry contact. Report your status. Over. Phoebus 10, this is Kano, Capcom. I read you loud and clear. How do you read me? Phoebus 10, this is Capcom. We now have iOS. Over. Phoebus 10, your voice transmissions are starting to fade very badly. I've lost radar here. What? Let me see. I've lost radar. We don't have contact here either. No contact at all. Capcom Tech calling Phoebus 10. This is Capcom Tech. Capcom Tech calling Phoebus 10. Come in. General Eaton, is there anything new to report? Gentlemen, you know it is not our policy to conceal information. But the situation as it stands now is that we have suddenly lost radar and radio contact. Until we discover the cause of the sudden loss, possible explanations are not available at this time. General, you've lost complete touch with gains. There's no contact whatsoever. Unfortunately, that's true. We hope that something had just gone wrong with this tracking signal transmitter. But the optical trackers tell us that they haven't locked on since the 15th pass. The 15th pass? I mean, they haven't been able to pick it up with their optical equipment. In the hour before the signal went dead, we established it. And then it just disappeared. There's been nothing on radar. And even the solar cells, which should supply power for tracking for years, if necessary, it failed somehow. The batteries are obviously gone. But even assuming that the solar cells could have failed somehow, the optical sighting should have continued. <sighs> but they haven't. Any other hypothesis? How about a meteor? The statistical possibility of a meteor hitting a satellite is fairly low. Very improbable. Well, what about the capsule leaving its orbit and coming back down to Earth? That's hardly possible. There'd be no foolproof means of making it spiral in. The trick, once it reaches denser layers of atmosphere, is to slow it up enough so that it wouldn't burn like a meteor, and then have some means of depositing it on the ground. I don't think I'm violating any security by saying that Major Gaines's craft had no such equipment. You'll have to excuse me. <laughs> Capcom? Capcom, this is Phoebus 10. I've lost contact with you. Capcom, this is Phoebus 10. I'm blacking out! How about it, Gaines? Can you talk? Sure, General. Yeah, sure, I can talk. Oh. Hey, Billy, what happened? We were waiting for you to wake up, Bob, and tell us. <clears throat> I, I... 
I don't know what to tell you. I, um, I blacked out. We lost you on radar and radio. We had no contact at all. It boils down to this, Gaines. You're the only one who can explain it. I can't explain anything. I, I had an odd, uh, sensation. Uh, the last thing I remember is a 15th orbit, then... And I don't, I don't remember anything except this... this bed. I couldn't reach the cape at all. I, I kept trying. Why don't you let him sleep? I think it'll be a little clearer later on. I won't be any clearer than I am right now. Bell, how could you lose me on radar? You mean to say that every single tracking station blacked out? Really, gentlemen, I think he ought Just to... Just one last question, Bob. There was only one way he could head back toward Earth. That was simply to spiral in and head for water. Your spacecraft was found intact 46 miles from where you were launched. Intact, Bob. On the ground. No evidence of any damage, not even a dent. Somehow, some way, you brought that spacecraft in and you landed her. How about? Explain to me how you did an absolutely impossible act. I didn't. I had nothing to do with it. I blacked out, General. I simply blacked out. There was some... some factor up there. Something that I had no control over. Something that must have... M m must have taken over for me. We'll talk about it later on. This entire thing is temporarily classified, gentlemen. I mean everything about it. Simply say that he regained entry and landed. That he's shaken up, but not seriously hurt. That's the feed. No enlargements, no extensions beyond that simple statement. After we probe this thing a little while, we may come up with some answers that we can let out. But for the time being, it's a one-sentence release. Quote, he came back down, unquote. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Now get some rest, Gaines. Sleep it off, buddy. There's an explanation for everything. Oh, I've called Helen, told her you were all right, so there's no worry there. <laughs> yeah, well, you've talked to her more than I have in the past week. Hmm? Yeah, two phone calls. That's two more than I've made. What do you mean, two? Well, you talked to her once before the blast, and, and then now. <laughs> you know, I feel like you're my proxy. I didn't call her before, Bob. I didn't have a chance. But I'm sure that she knows that you're all right. What's the matter? Just before I went up, we were talking in the locker room. You, you, you said you phoned her. I didn't phone her, Bob. I never told you I did. I guess you dreamed it. No, I didn't dream it. I remember you telling me that, okay? That's just part of a delusion. Maybe it's part of the whole pattern here. But why worry about it now? You're all doped up and you're all so dead tired. Sleep it off, and I'll see what I can do about getting you a leave to go home. Rest easy, pal. Need a hand with your bag? Nope, I got it. Now give Helen my love, and do me a favor. All your concerns, all your question marks... Keep them in abeyance for a while. Stick them in a drawer someplace and bring them out one by one. But do it gradually. Give yourself time. And that's supposed to mean what? That's supposed to mean that all the mysteries of the universe don't have to get settled by one man in one morning. Those stars have been up there for a long time. I'll keep it in mind. Thanks for the services rendered. I'll talk to you later. No question about it. Hi, sweetie. Guess who? Welcome home. What's the matter, Bob? Huh, is that what you did for therapy while I was gone? You put up that fence? What do you mean? That fence. It wasn't there when I left last week. Are you kidding me? That fence was there when we bought the house. I guess outer space does things to memories, huh? Yeah, I guess so. America's latest manned orbital flight into space ends on a note of mystery today with a cloak of secrecy placed over the entire... Got any more coffee out there? 
I'm making some. Be done in a minute. The Space Administration announced late this afternoon that the flight was a success, but admitted contact was lost at one point. Gaines landed safely, but as to where and how, that is what the Space Administration censored, and no further information has been forthcoming. I'm going to go up and put on a bathrobe, okay? I'll be right down. Do you want Maggie to get it? <laughs> Both of you have been treating me like a cross between a millionaire eccentric and a piece of Dresden China, okay? <laughs> I'll be right back. Millions of Americans watched the orbital flight when suddenly the pictures were interrupted and all major networks went back to their regular broadcasting schedules with an announcement that there would be no further coverage of the historic flight. General Stanley Eaton announced late this afternoon that for the moment all aspects of astronaut Gaines's flight would Your coffee's ready. Want us to bring you a cup? I'll be right down. <laughs> Will you look at that? <laughs> what? Here's your coffee. Thanks. <laughs> what are you laughing about? Oh, there's going to be a chicken colonel back at the base running around in his undershirt. <laughs> what do you mean? Look, look at this collar. The insignia. I walked off with somebody's shirt. <laughs> a full colonel's no less. But, Bob... You are a full colonel. Helen? What, darling? What's the matter? All right, honey, tell me the truth. The absolute truth. No games. When I left, when I walked out of here, what was my rank? Your rank? Wasn't I a major? Haven't I been a major for 13 months? Bob, don't. You're scaring me. Well, without trying to scare you, honey... And, and without trying to make you wonder whether I still have all my marbles, I'd like you to answer my question. Are you serious? I'm not playing games, Helen. Please. You've been a full colonel since last March. Last March? March. I want to say something to you now. I don't know what happened up there. I know you don't want to talk about it yet, and that's why we haven't said anything. But something must have happened, Bob. That's just it. I don't know what happened. Believe me, Helen, I have no idea at all. Listen, darling, you told me once that there were whole areas of space medicine that had only been touched upon, phenomena and reaction patterns that could only be guessed at. I'm sure this is one of them. I'm sure that there isn't anything wrong with you except a couple of odd fixations that will go away with time. I don't know what happened, but I do know that I'm rational, Helen. I do know that I haven't changed at all, but in, in, in some crazy, unexplainable way, the things around me have. Nothing's changed. You've gone through some kind of... some kind of trauma. And somewhere along the line, Bob, you've gotten a hold of some... Some delusions? Huh? Huh? Some distortions? Like the fence outside of the house. I don't remember it, Helen. You told me it had been here when we bought the house. A and then there was this, this business with Bill Conacher. He told me he'd phoned you before the blast off. He made it a point to tell me. But afterwards... Afterwards, he said there was no such phone conversation. It's, it's not important, really. I mean, it's insignificant. And yet, it's part of... Part of a crazy pattern here. Something is very wrong. Because he did tell me he called you earlier, and that fence wasn't there, and those eagles were never on my collar before, because when I left, I was a major. Come on downstairs. We'll have dessert. And don't let a white fence and a promotion end the world for you. Helen, I, I think it would be a whole lot better if we just dropped all the pretenses. If you think there's something wrong with me, just say so. But honey, I'd consider it a real favor if you didn't tiptoe around me, all right? All right. I was... I was going to ask Bill Conacher if he'd like to come over for dinner. How about a piece of pie with your coffee? I helped Mommy make it. Oh, did you? I'll get it for you, Daddy. Thanks, sweetie. Careful, Mags. Don't break any more plates. I won't. So, uh... Why did you want to call Bill? I remember...
remember he said once that there were some aspects of prolonged weightlessness that can't be explained. Here you are, Daddy. Ah, you know, little girl. One day, I'm gonna lose you to some Navy ensign who'll marry you for your father's fortune and your cooking. <laughs> Come here, baby, give me a hug. Don't! Maggie, honey, what's the matter? Nothing. Maggie, tell me, what's wrong? He... He's different. How, honey? How? Tell me, how am I different? I don't know. I don't know, but you are. You are different. You're very different. What does she mean? I don't know. Yes, you do. What does she mean, I'm different? Am I? Am I, Helen? Have I changed that much? I can't explain it, Bob. I don't know how. But I have changed, haven't I? There's something different about me. The child sensed it, and you sensed it too, Helen. Yes, I have. How? I don't know. It's just that you're not the same somehow. You didn't have to call Bill Conacher. That wasn't necessary. Tomorrow I'll report in, uh, for psychiatric help. I don't know what it is that's happened, but something did. Something that's tearing us all apart, and until we find out what it is, it's going to keep on doing that. Helen, how is he? How do you do, Mrs. Gaines? Bob's still in with a the doctor. They should be about finished. Well, Doctor? If you're looking for a very specific label, I'm afraid I'll have to disappoint you, sir. We're looking, Doctor, for some memory that might explain a re-entry and landing of a spacecraft that absolutely defies physical laws. Oh, I can't help you there, sir. That's physics. This is psychiatry. Mrs. Gaines. Yes? Your husband is suffering from a collection of very odd fixations. I say odd because there seems to be no pattern. The conversations he recollects that never occurred. The idea that he's a major and not a colonel. The fence around the house that he claims was never built. You put all these things together and they don't add up. They're totally unrelated. At least after a fairly perfunctory examination. I'll need more time with the patient, General. There was nothing he could tell you about what happened up there? Nothing that he could relate to me. Then we're back to where we started. I don't mean to sound careless, Mrs. Gaines. He's an exceptional officer, that husband of yours. I think he'll be out of the woods in no time. My concern happens to be the space program. I understand, sir. Come on, Helen. I'll walk you out. Mrs. Gaines, what about that fence? It was there when we bought the house. And when did he seem surprised that it was there? The moment he came back. Yesterday morning. Really? A very strange collection of delusions. A white picket fence, his rank, and the last thing he said was he doubted very much if President Kennedy would pin any medals on him. President who? Someone named John Kennedy. Who's John Kennedy? Someone who Colonel Gaines has decided is the President of the United States. And I share your bewilderment. I never heard of him either. Come in, Bill. How is he? He's fine. He's perfect. A picture of health, except for a couple of almost invisible flaws. In fact, he's upstairs right now, studying a set of encyclopedias and taking notes as if he were cramming for an exam. He says they've got some of the facts wrong. Names and dates and world events. Either they do or he does. Still the fixations. More of them now. This afternoon, he got into an argument with Lieutenant Hempstead's wife. About what? Not an argument, really. Just a mild exchange. He claimed that Joe was Air Force. Said he'd flown with him at Wright-Patterson Air Force Base. Joe Hempstead has always been armored infantry. Bob met him at Fort Riley at command school. But he gets this... 
this fixation, and after a while, he makes you think that maybe you're all mixed up. And there's another thing. Go on, Helen. It isn't easy to say. Maggie noticed it, too. There's something... something different about him. Something we can't put our fingers on, but... Bill, reassure me, will you? Tell me that this ice-cold feeling I have is way off. Tell me that the man upstairs is really Bob Gaines. I'm sorry, General, but that's what we came up with. And you expect me to believe it? What you've told me is fantastic, incredible. How in the name of... I can't answer you how, General. This hypothesis will have to come from someone else. I'm only the project manager. But I can tell you what we've just seen. And it's not the same capsule that we sent off. It's almost a twin to it. Down to the very last nut and bolt. But it's simply not the same spacecraft. It's a different vehicle. It's made as if it came out of the same mold. But every now and then in the wiring, in the control panel, in the structure, you come up with one very irrevocable fact. Colonel Gaines went up in one spacecraft, but he came back in another. Which leaves us with two alternatives. One, Colonel Gaines actually blacked out and has no knowledge of what occurred. Or two, that Colonel Gaines is not who we think he is. But then, General, who is he? Colonel, I want you to examine the vehicle carefully. I want you to be able to say to me without one single shred of doubt that this is the same Astro 7 spacecraft you were sent up in and came down in. This is extremely important. I'll try, General. Phoebus 10. Phoebus 10. Good. Phoebus 10. I trust I've made my point. Well, have I? I, I I'm sorry, what? What's the matter? Bob, what the general is getting at... Phoebus 10. Phoebus 10. We're not sure whether or not your landing bag is deployed. We feel it is possible to re-enter with the retro package on. We see no I, I don't... I, uh, I, I can't. Bob, what's the matter with you? I said I'll try, okay? Uh, uh just, just, just a minute. This is California Cap Tech. The weather in the recovery area is excellent. Three-foot waves... Ten miles visibility. Don't you hear that voice? Gaines, what's going on? What voice? Phoebus 10. Phoebus 10. This is California Captech. Do you read? Over. Phoebus 10. We're recommending that you leave the retro package on during re-entry. Override the 0.05G switch. Expected at 044353. Retract the scope manually. Do you read? Phoebus 10. Recommend you go to re-entry attitude and retract your scope manually at this time. have you on that. We'll give you the countdown for retro sequence time, Bob. You're looking good. We have only 50 seconds to retrograde. I'll give you a mark. 45. Mark. I'm on ASCS and backing it up manual. Good, Bob. Leave your retro pack on through your pass over Texas. Do you read? Roger. 15 seconds to sequence. 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, fire. Roger, retros are firing. I am starting my re-entry now. I'm going to fly by wire, down to about 50% on manual. There's a real fireball outside. How are you doing? What's your condition? I'm, uh... I'm feeling... I'm feeling fine. Condition is good. But, uh, listen, there's a lot... There's a lot of fire out there. An awful lot. Capcom? Capcom, just one question. Go ahead, Bob. Who is the President of the United States? Say again, Bob. We don't think we got that. Who is the President of the United States? Sounds like you're asking who the President is. Roger, that's the question. Bob, the President of the United States is... I sure hope you said Kennedy.
Our wandering boy is awake. Bill? I'm right here, buddy. How do you feel, Major? Well, that depends. Did you hear the question I asked up there, just before re-entry? You wanted to know who the President was. What was that, a gag? No gag. I didn't hear the answer. President Kennedy. You were gone two days, Major, not two years. What happened the second morning, Gaines? It was your 15th orbit. We lost you for a period of almost six hours. Lost? No radar, no contact. We couldn't find any reason for it. We threw the question at you several times later on after we picked you up again, but you ignored it. Six hours? That's about how long it took. Then you came back in loud and clear. Gentlemen, please. Right now I think he'd better rest. Oh, all right, Doctor. Bill. Something... Something happened. You're not gonna believe this. I'm not absolutely certain I believe it myself. There is, uh, another dimension. I don't know where it exists or how, but it's a world that's a twin to ours. Same places, most of the same people, most of the same chronology of events, except every now and then there's something a little bit different. How do you know this? Because I was there, sir for almost a week. That's impossible. We only lost you for six hours. I can't help that, sir. During those six hours, I lived out a week. Doing what? Looking at our counterparts, at us. Us? As we exist in a parallel world, General. A world that exists alongside us, but, but one that we can't see. And, and one that I, I stumbled into. I don't know how. Some, some kind of space-time warp or something, but there's a doorway up there. It exists, and every now and then, it's possible to fall through it, like I did. Well, how did you get back? I don't even know that. All I remember is standing by the spacecraft in the hangar, and, and then I was up there again, and now I'm back here. Bob, sleep on this for a little while, will you? Why? Because this whole thing may be a delusion. A delusion? Bill, I, I, I don't have any proof. But I can recount to you, minute by minute, everything that happened. Every word that was said, every person I met. I could describe the streets. Everything. This was no dream. We'll talk about it after a while, Major. Get some rest. Has anybody phoned Helen? She asked what you wanted for supper. Will I be able to leave? At least for an overnight. But we want you back here first thing in the morning. What for? I want to look at the psychiatrist's face when you start talking about parallel dimensions. We'll see you later, Major. One last question. Be my guest. If we each have a counterpart, and you saw them, where was yours, Bob? I don't know. But he's a, he's a colonel, a full colonel. And I hope he got back. He's got a very beautiful wife and a very lovely little daughter. What do you think? I don't think. Not on this one, sir. Some kind of trauma. What else? Another dimension? Another world that's parallel to ours? Does that sound rational to you? Up there, who knows what's rational and what isn't? We don't even know the rules, sir, let alone the facts. We're little ants that have just made it to the desert, and now we say we've conquered the Sahara. But we haven't conquered anything. We're only starting to find the mysteries, General. We haven't even begun to solve them. We're going to do a lot of groping through a lot of dark nights, through a lot of space, before we find the answers. We've got a long way to go, sir. Sir. Yes? There's a message from Capcom, sir. It doesn't make much sense. I'll judge that. Capcom reports telemetry with an unidentified space vehicle. What? They had voice communication for about a minute and a half. The, the spacecraft identified itself as the Astro 7, and, and the person in it said... Said what? He identified himself as a Colonel Robert Gaines. He asked for re-entry data. 
Colonel Robert Gaines. Yes, sir. Then we got some garbled stuff, and then nothing. Then what? Well, then nothing, sir. We lost the visual sighting, and we lost all voice. The thing just disappeared. Get a transcript of everything that was said. Have it brought over to my office. Keep trying to raise... whoever it was. Yes, sir. We're still trying, sir. All right. Keep me in touch. Yes, sir. You're so right, Colonel Conacher, when you say that we've got a long way to go. A lot of questions to answer. And you are so right when you say that... that we haven't even begun. Anything on your mind? One thing. I'd like to tell astronaut Gaines that his proof just showed up on a radar screen, however briefly. Be my guest. Yes, sir. Get your hat? I just wanted to give you some information. You expressed some interest before in a Colonel Gaines. You said something to the effect that... that you prayed to God he'd get back all right. And? Well, I thought I ought to tell you. He's on his way. Thank God. Thank God for that. Hey, thanks for the ride. My pleasure, Bobby. I really mean that, you know. I do. I do know it, Bill. Daddy! Hey, sweetie. Do me a favor. What? Who am I? <laughs> Why, you're my daddy, silly. <laughs> Thank you, honey. That's all I wanted to know. Hey, where's... Mommy, come here! Bob? Yes. Oh, Bob, darling, welcome back. You don't know how glad I am to be back. Major Robert Gaines, a latter-day voyager just returned from an adventure... Submitted to you without any recommendations as to belief or disbelief. You can accept or reject. He pays your money and takes your choice. But credulous or incredulous, don't bother to ask anyone for proof that it happened. The obligation is a reverse challenge. Because NASA, try as they might, has never been able to prove that it didn't. At least not in the Twilight Zone. Hi, this is Carl Amari, producer of the Twilight Zone radio dramas. I'd like to take a moment to tell you about our official website at twilightzoneradio.com, where you'll get the latest news and information on these Twilight Zone radio dramas. Plus, at twilightzoneradio.com, you can digitally download three free episodes or any of our episodes for only $1.95 each. In this age of ever-changing technology, we've decided to make these episodes instantly available to you by making the Twilight Zone radio dramas a digital download-only series. This means that this series will no longer be offered on CD. The CD collections at our website are now being offered, while supplies last, at buy one, get one free. So be sure to get your favorites before they're sold out. Be sure to visit us often, and I'll see you in the zone. The Parallel, starring Lou Diamond Phillips with Stacey Keach as your narrator, was adapted for radio by Dennis Etchison and based on a script by Rod Serling. Heard in the cast were Maggie Carney, Lauren Patton, Roderick Peoples, Rich Kalmanick, Doug James, Guy Burrill, Meg Thalken, Carl Amari, Roger Wolski, and Mike Baccarella. To learn more about the Twilight Zone radio dramas and to obtain audio cassettes and CDs of these programs, visit our website at twilightzoneradio.com. This copyrighted radio series is produced and directed by Carl Amari and Roger Wolski for Falcon Picture Group. Doug James speaking.